Sports cars are about sporty feelings, obviously. One prefers a stiff body and playful chassis, the other puts an engine on the first place. I'm the first type of a petrol head, but once the engine is boring and unexciting, the driving thrill is not as high. This video will show you some of those which did not deliver the joy as expected. <laughs> Triumph 3 litre V8. Originally to be a fuel injected 2.5 litre, it became a carbureted 3 litre for simplicity with bored cylinders to gain more power via displacement. With bigger cylinders, there was less space for water jacket, and besides the water pump mounted higher than the fuel cap, this engine had a serious overheating problem. Other issues is included a ridiculously long single row timing chain and warping head. Pontiac 301 Turbo In the 80s, EPA introduced the very strict emission regulations and GM engineers had to scratch their heads heavily to come with a viable solution for the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. As the 350 was too thirsty but good power rated, they eventually decided to lower its displacement and add a turbocharger, although no major problems were reported. With a 9 second 0 to 62 mph time and 41 horse per liter, it wasn't something to write home about. GM Iron Duke Today's first cylinder Camaro is kinda a disappointment, but definitely not power-wise. The first 4-banger Camaro was a true sports car disaster, as it was the Iron Duke power in it. It was a half of the 301 pushrod engine, used by almost every GM brand from family models up to the Jeep CJ. But sporty models such as the Camaro, Piero or Firebird were amongst them, and with a 0 to 60 mph time of 20 seconds, you can't call that a good performance unit despite its reliability. Chevrolet 305 high output. Although we spoke about the original small block as a very good engine in general, and particularly 305 was a pretty much a perfect engine considering the compromise between power and fuel consumption. However, power wise in sports cars, it didn't really break through in the Camaro or Firebird. Porsche 924 Sometimes called a poor man's Porsche, the 924 came to fill a place after the air-cooled boxer-powered 914. Being propelled by a water-cooled inline 4 by Audi, the Porsche 924 did not leave much to be desired for. It was known for significant vibrations and soft power delivery, and besides, the US version was choked to just 95 horsepower.
Mitsubishi 4G54B. As a bigger brother to the 4G63, the 4G54B was a factory turbocharged engine, which meant a lot of expectations, especially for aftermarket tuning. However, the turbo was small, the head, intake and even throttle body were restrictive, and the after throttle body dual fuel injectors failed to distribute gasoline evenly. It was also prone to head gasket failure, and unfortunately, aftermarket is weak. PRV V6 There were two generations of the PRV, the first one being uneven firing without split crank pins and not being such a pleasure to drive. In fact, it wasn't really powerful considering its displacement and many solutions around it were compromises as it was meant to be a V8, but the idea was changed in 1973 during development. It had some reliability issues and Volvo guys didn't really like it. 